Where would we go if we don't go to the COP? We're very worried, especially small countries, the smaller countries. We can't allow G7, G20, or even now we're seeing BRICS is trying to, to discover, is discussing about enlarging the, the BRICS group, the British, uh, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, uh, China, and South Africa. What we know is if the BRICS, which is a developing world group, is where will they stand vis-a-vis uh, -vis G77 and China, which includes all the small islands. And for, for us, whether it's G20, whether it's G7, whether it's the BRICS, small islands like Seychelles, we're still left out in the cold. We're still elbowed off, off, the, off the table. The only place where we can speak and no one can shut us up or can, say you can't come here is the UN. The UN is the only thing we have. It's the only place every independent sovereign country in the world has a voice and you can't stop them speaking, although there are t attempts to do it. I've been in, 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 in meeting cops where the gavel went down very quickly to stop someone from saying something that the rest of us didn't like. But it's the only place we can go and speak and, and at the same time, not just speak out, it's the only place where we can gather as a group, the states, the small island developing states, we gather as AOCs, the Alliance of Small Island States. And when the biggest gathering of negotiators from small island states are the cops. If you go over the history of the cops, to look at some of from the Kyoto Protocol on some of the biggest uh, achievements, including loss and damage. They actually were put on the table by the COP, by the states. Let us look at one of the biggest gains of COP27 was loss and damage fund, right? The states raised loss and damage more than 30 years ago. We were the first. It took 30 years to accept. Can you imagine how, how what climate change has done in that past 30 years.